Hey, it's Bill Gross, the LA probate expert, and my continuing series of important vendors to those of us who are in the business, whether you're an attorney or a realtor, one of the key things is where you get your data from. And I was introduced by one of my good friends and top producers, Joshua, uh, to Ace Waldor, who does probate data, and I wanted to share him with you today. Hey, Ace, how you doing? Hey, glad, glad to be here. Well, hopefully everybody can uh, walk away with something useful here. I hope so. So now I know you just told me on the phone how hot it was where you are. Uh, but, so I know you're not in the mountains. <laughs> where, where, where's the background? Where are you located? Okay, physically, we're located in the LA County uh, area. We're just north of Long Beach um, in a city called Montebello. That's mm-hmm. so kind of one of the suburbs of LA itself. So it's, but it does get hot. So tell me about your business. Um, uh, first off, how'd you get into providing probate data? All right. Well, back in the day, I used to work for a company that we were collecting uh, unlawful detainer information. Um, after a while, we uh, went our different ways and I got approached by a realtor investor out in Torrance and he was only interested in the Torrance area. So we started doing it then and then that ended and then a couple of years later, we were still doing uh, unlawful detainer pro, um, programs um, and found uh, one of the guys found, um, who you might have heard of, Mike Torres, mm-hmm. found me at the LA courthouse and said, hey, we need somebody to do this and we don't want to, we don't know what it takes. So I said, well, it's pretty easy. So we got started, looked into it and started doing it from there. And since then, we have become probably one of the most um, how can I put this? Most complete information providers uh, out there to the point where I know for a fact that a couple of companies have literally stolen our data and try to sell it off as theirs, which happens. And I'm, they say that flattery is uh, a good, um, good, you know, good thing, but not when it comes to the, uh, to the reputation of the other person. Sure. So for those who don't know, Mike Torres is the founder of MTI Education and uh, does uh, probate training as well as sales data. So in Mike Torres' program, I know when people subscribe, they buy data. Is that your, are you still his provider or is that? No, we're not. Um, he, um, he decided that uh, he wanted to go a different route with his uh, program and um, we just uh, parted ways. He kind of helped us get started, but we don't do that. We don't uh, provide data to resellers uh, at the at the moment because it dilutes the valid uh, the, the validity of the data, and it just makes it for a lot of people who are going to seminars not understanding the the full process about it, and just you know, frustrates the uh, petitioners and the beneficiaries with tons of letters. Sure. You also referred to me by one of my favorite people in real estate and one of my entrees of probate, Kevin Sales. In fact, he was the one who lately suggested, hey, you need to get reach out to Ace and see what he's doing and um, include him. So uh, you really have some pretty good credentials where I come from. So um, if somebody was interested in probate data, um, can you describe your service and what, what you offer and what the cost for that is? Sure. One of the things that we do is, and we're not bragging, we're within seven days of data filing. Uh, most of the other companies out there are at least two weeks behind us. So you're already talking, if you want to be able to get the uh, petitioner to sign on with you, you want to be among the first that they see. From that point, we uh, provide probate leads for the uh, five largest counties in Southern California, which is Los Angeles, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino, and San Diego. We can venture out, but we've kind of uh, scaled back mostly because of pandemic and hard to keep people on board. We provide the information as it's found on the petition. So there are a couple of things that a lot of people don't understand what the petition is. It is the starting paper, uh, paper documentation, paperwork for a, um, a probate to get started. Anything that is in a will or not in a will will go through probate. No matter how you how solid your will could be, it can be contested, and it has to get a, a approval. You do need, if you want to avoid that, you really do need a living trust. But we get going back to what we provide. We get the uh, documents, copy all the information, and provide it to our uh, 
partners. We don't have clients, we have partners because we're all working at this together. Uh, we provide it in one of two formats, either Excel or Word, which I've got, I'm not sure how to uh, send a copy. Let's see, share screen. Uh, oh, you not able to share it. Okay, no problem. Well, I'll leave sure, hold on. Okay. Let me fix that. No, hold on one second. I have authority, <laughs> hold on one second. If I can't, okay. there you go, should be now. All right. Uh, let's see, here's one of our um, documents. And as you can see, it starts out by, well, this gets changed to your name. And, we, and here's an easy way to see what it, we uh, capture. We let you know what date we got the information. And again, this is a um, this was a live uh, probate. So that's why you're gonna see the redaction of uh, numbers. We didn't want anybody to get free data. But we get you give you the date that we captured it, the case number, the date the actual documents were filed, when the uh, decedent passed, the attorney's information, name of the decedent, the address at the time of death, the city of uh, death, the zip code, how much rental property income was being had. Sometimes they own a property but live somewhere else. So this will tell you what uh, it, rental income they had. If they had, the, if they owned the property and lived in it, we put the value here, any encumbrances, if there's a mortgage or any outstanding balances and what the estate value is, who the petitioner uh, information, um, who's the petitioner, the information on the petitioner, the type of position they're asking for, either their executor or administrator and what type of authority. We let you know that they were bonded. Right now, because we're still operating under COVID restrictions, you're only going to get the first beneficiary, but normally we provide you uh, six beneficiaries and information. The Excel format, let me switch out here, is pretty much the same, but it's, um, if you ever, have ever seen an Excel spreadsheet, it is a very long spreadsheet. Uh, let's just get rid of that. And... It is, I guess, you know, this is gonna, if you try to print this up, you're right. looking at about 12 different pages. Right. The only difference is that here, uh, you see that it says relationship uh, beneficiary 12. Right. On the Excel format, we do have up to 12 beneficiaries. That's really the only difference between the two. Got we it. send these out on a weekly basis, uh, usually by Friday, no later than Saturday, because sometimes, there's a couple of things that might happen. The one thing that we're theoretically doing is we're doing a legal transcription. So I can't alter a lot of the information that shows up like a lot of other companies do. The only thing that I will include that may or may not be there is the zip code to the property uh, and some of the beneficiaries uh, if they don't list the zip code. But that's pretty much it. That's how we uh, provide the uh, information. And like I said, we're among the, we're the only one that I'm aware of that provides us information that we get it within a week. We don't go out and buy it from somebody else. We don't send, uh, we don't use a, uh, a technique called spidering, which is they go to the courthouse, get the information there. Then they go to the county recorder's office, um, death records to see when they died. And then they go to the county recorder's office for uh, real estate uh, taxes to see if that person owned any property. We know the county's not very current with that record as much as they, we'd like them to be. So you're going to get records that, you know, for properties that the decedent doesn't own anymore. So do people subscribe to one county, multiple counties? Can you share what the cost is on that? Uh, it depends on how eager you want to get with um, your marketing. If I've got uh, people that have, a very strict uh, requirement. They only want petitioners that are out of state. So that person might get one or two a month. If they, um, they want to uh, get everybody, then they turn around, they say, well, we want LA County. We want everything. We provide it that way. We do filter it out by position and or authority of the petitioner, uh, address of the property, mostly by zip code. And I do have one person that has uh, the request of they want properties over 200,000. So they won't, if it's 199, 999.99, they're not gonna see it because so, it doesn't meet their requirement. 
So do you charge different amounts based on those requirements or how does the process work? Well, to start out, the leads are $1.50. Um, one of the most reasonably priced out there. That allows for a one filter, which could be whatever you want, could be the courthouse, the county, whatever. Then as you go on and add on more filters, each filter is 25 cents add on. And I think we were at, uh, we just upped our prices late last year. And I think that um, we are at uh, three, three under just under $3 for a, a severely limited report. And that means that you're getting a very exclusive uh, report for your area. We do have a website up, but um, let me see if I've got the website up here. The website is informational only. No, I don't see, we have to jump out and try to pull it up. Uh, but if you wanna pull it up or type it in, it's mm -hmm. JJ, like Jack and Jill, S-R-V-C-S. So when you write it out, it looks like you wrote out the word services and dropped all the vowels. And it's a dot com. So you'll get to see um, you know, what we offer. And that's an informational website only, which means you're not going to be um, you're not going to be able to get any of the leads because the leads are tailored to you. So we will do all the work for you. Got it. So I have a, I have a link to the website uh, yeah. or a view of it online. You can see where they talk about the services in detail. They talk about the in um, the in yeah. That, see, that's where it was uh, the two filters was changed, but um, you see customized reporting. You're at uh, 225, which is what it should be. Uh, that's more than three filters. That's a highly uh, detailed report. Daily transmittals on the courts that we go to on a daily basis. You can uh, get the reports as we capture the information, and that goes in hand in hand with early transmittals. Got it. Uh, so Special requests are as if you want copies of the documents. We, uh, we The court charges us, so we have to pass that charge on. And if you've ever gone to any of the uh, courts, you know that uh, it's a 50 cent per page copy. Right. And, yeah. and then you can also see uh, how we accept payment. When, when, um, those, are the, those amounts are on our prepaid accounts and it is the amount is taken out of what the uh, prepayment is, which is all our accounts are started out with a hundred dollars. Now you're getting the data from the filing. So um, do you do any kind of additions or appendage uh, petitioner information? Let's say there's an attorney file. Do you, do you check the petitioner and try to get their specific contact info or, or beneficiaries, or do you just take the information that's on the filings? We get it uh, from the filings. Cause like I said, we're doing, theoretically a legal transcription. So if the petitioner is um, listed as, um, as Bill, then Bill's information is gonna get passed out. He may uh, be changed. We do allow our clients, our partners to come back at us and say, hey, there's a new petitioner. Can you find out who it is? We do go back and research that for free and send you the updated information. Great. Well, obviously, this is a customized service. This is also one that um, if you're a little more sophisticated, you get the information you want rather than just taking the information that's given to you. Um, and so definitely worth looking into. I'm seeing my mind's uh, clicking here on some things that we can do with it as well. Um, I actually subscribed to two services. I was just introduced to yours recently and looked at I appreciate the walkthrough. Uh, I, can already, I can already imagine um, because really you're doing some work uh, that I'm paying a VA to do from, from the raw data, you're doing it as well. So it's always always interesting to see it. And it sounds like your data is faster than what I'm getting. So why not get the data faster? Right, um, the, uh, the one thing about uh, the speed of us versus some of the other companies is that we are actually in the courts. Uh, we don't buy the data from uh, subcontractors. We don't uh, uh, spider the information. We're physically, I can give you a schedule as to when you can find me and at what court. So it's, we're, we're physically there. You're definitely nice. gonna run into us. Nice, yeah, and I've run into data collectors. I've been to LA pre-COVID, haven't been there since uh, for that purpose, but because um, it's a little more restricted. Yes. So um, uh, you're able to get the data, is there, are we back, are you able to get data at full steam now post-COVID? Are, are there restrictions? Are you able to get into LA County, for example, regularly and get your data? Or, or where are you at in that process? Each county is a little bit different as to the access. Alley County 
Uh, most of the courthouses do give you access, but they give you a time limit as to how long you can be there. I know that um, LA was uh, at 30 minutes a day and right. you had to uh, switch out. You also had to make appointments, which is a lot of, one of the biggest things that being in the courthouse as much as I am, I run into a lot of people just showing up and start working and they don't realize that you do require, it does require an appointment and yeah. there is a time limit. Mm -hmm. um, there is only one court, two courts, I take that back, two courts where you can walk in and if you know what you're doing, you can get the information. The good thing is that all the courthouses are now computerized, so you get the information off the computer, but keep in mind that there are other people waiting to use those right. computers as well. Right. Right. So right. are we back to what we were pre-COVID? Not exactly. Um, so give me, so let's step back a little bit. I appreciate the walkthrough in your service. Like I said, I, my, my head's kind of spinning with some things I can do to use you going forward. Talk a little bit about, um, <clears throat> you know, people watching this are real estate agents, some looking to get started, some already in probate, maybe need better data and would be a customer of yours. Talk a little bit about what do you see as a common denominator of um, success in the business? I'm sure you get people who are very gung-ho. <clears throat> the day they start, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and they filter out after three days. And then I know you know some guys who are you know long-term successful agents. What do you see as the difference between the two? Well, um, you got to love and hate the, um, the real estate seminars that are being done throughout the country. Uh, they get motivated. Uh, they tell you a lot of um, a lot of stories, and one of the mm -hmm. biggest stories that I hear is that, oh well, if you get uh, you can get property through probate at on pennies on the dollar. Yeah. That's not quite true. Um, mm -hmm. The county uh, the court system has a minimum requirement, and that tends to be de, um, deter a lot of newbies into the business. A lot of investors, a lot of agents. They they thought. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I'm going to get a hundred thousand dollar property for twenty five thousand. Not going to happen. Um, it doesn't even happen in foreclosures. Uh, yeah. So that's the one thing. The people that kind of last in it are the ones that are serious, looking at being real estate agents or investors. Those are the ones that are realize that your standard probate will last anywhere from six weeks to eighteen months because from the date that uh, you file your petition, it takes about 30 days to actually get into the court to get appointed whatever position you are. And then from there, as long as nobody's contesting it, it can be done in six months, it could be done in <clears throat> uh, 18 months. So that's the biggest thing is if you're looking for the quick buck, this isn't the business to be in. <coughs> it's, it's not going to happen. Like I said, I, I've seen probates last literally years. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's everybody's contesting it. Everybody's saying, well, mom, dad, whoever passed away promised me this. That's not always uh, what was written. And then you got people who, and I've seen, and I just saw this last week where the one of the daughters uh, took over, moved in, and is pro planning on selling the property without telling her siblings. And obviously you can't do that. So that's the biggest thing. You gotta realize that with probates, it's you're in it for the long haul and count on something you saw today not coming to fruition for at least 18 months. If it happens sooner, consider yourself lucky. I've listened closing this month where the case number starts with one six to give me an idea of which means it started in 2016. So yeah, definitely uh, probates can take a while. Um, well, look, Ace, I appreciate the detailed rundown and on your service. Like I said, um, I, I appreciate it personally and on behalf of people who are watching my channel, uh, real estate agents, investors looking to add probate in the Southern California area, you handle five counties, LA, Orange, San Bernardino, Riverside, and San Diego. Appreciate the time today. Thank you so much for sharing with us. It's our pleasure. Like I said, I always like to let people know, you know, that there are other ways of um, trying to get, if you're in a real estate industry, you know, that there's other ways to get more current data. You know, basically what we do is we make it easier for you to do what you got to do as a real estate agent or investor. You know, you don't have to fight traffic. You don't have to look for parking. You don't have to uh, fumble through 80, 90 different case files. Because if you don't know how to look for a probate case, you're going to be there all day and maybe pull five. Yeah. I think it's good for, 
I think it's good for agents to go and learn how to get the data. And once they figure it out, then hire a service provider. I think it's good to understand the fundamentals before you pay somebody to do something. Um, obviously, they're not going to do as well as you are. Um, and even if they pay for your service, they'll discover some pieces they're missing. But I do, I do recommend people go to the courthouse, figure out where the files are, figure out how to pull one up. Um, it is hard and frustrating, but once you do, I think it's eye-opening and that that is of value to them. So that's how I teach. Well, definitely a good idea, but also keep in mind that the court clerks are not going to help you. They're not no, there. No. They will literally tell you, I'm not here to keep your business going. Exactly. No, you're 100 right. I listened to some of the trainers who I think have ever been to a courthouse or done business. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I just walk up to the court clerk and ask them for help and say hi to him, bring him a Starbucks card. And I'm like, they're behind plastic, uh, uh, um, you know, fences, basically. And the last thing we do is help you because they look at you as just more work. So, no, 100 percent correct. You're on your own. And uh, Ace, I think you've given us a nice walkthrough of what what the process looks like. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. My pleasure.